All the new America's Cup class boats have now been launched. Each has taken three years to develop. Each has a seven figure price tag. And all are expected to hit top speeds in excess of 45 knots and stay airborne for the entire race. A radical step forward in anybody's language. Five years ago, foiling cup boats were a fantasy. Today, they are a reality. Artemis Racing and Group Armour Team France were the last two teams to crack bubbly over the bow. It's pretty exciting to get a new toy. Um, it's been a long time coming. You know, we've had two development boats throughout the last couple of years testing various foils and systems and what we roll out today is all the things that we've learned. Dean Barker's SoftBank Team Japan have been doing the same. A lot of the decisions that will ultimately uh, determine the result were set in stone months ago and you know, really now it's about learning to, to use the equipment that you've got, um, making the most of it and then trying to figure out how to improve it between now and uh, now and May. But among the smiles and the onshore buzz, when it comes to revealing what the new machines can really do, the chatter dries up. So why are teams so shy? What is there to hide? And how do the new boats differ from their prototypes? The French team has been happy to lift the lid on what is under the skin of an America's Cup class cat. Although the new AC class boats are slightly longer, they take many of the systems and components developed aboard team's test boats. The wing, pod and crossbeams are the same, as are the hydraulic and electronic circuits. But in a departure from cup tradition, the new class shares several major elements across the fleet. The hulls are one design, and the wings are so close as to make little difference. This leaves the foils and their control systems as key areas for development. With 40 plus knots of wind over the deck, aerodynamic drag is also a big deal, and teams have developed sophisticated fairings. Of the six crew, the front pair provide power to control the foils. The middle pair provide power for the wing trim. The helmsman controls the main foil using buttons on the wheel. The big secrets lie in the control systems for the complex networks of electrical cables and hydraulic pipework. And success may well come down to who has mastered this technical challenge the best. While teams are bashful when it comes to the hidden technology, they find it harder to conceal their enthusiasm after the first sail. Yeah, everyone's always pretty excited when you get a new toy and you first go sailing. Uh, I'm no different at all. It's, it is a very exciting day. Really nice breeze here, sort of 12, 15 knots. You treat the boat very gently for the first five or 10 minutes and then once you're allowed to, to push it a bit harder, we did. And you know, the boat from the first takeoff feels really nice. And the guys who have built it and engineered it have done an amazing job. But there is one team that has taken a bold and visible step in in the design of their new boat. The Kiwis believe that generating power is a key area aboard the new machines and have replaced conventional grinders with pedal power. All right, so today they're doing the, the fitness testing. So there'll be four guys doing it at the same time. Three, two, one, go. And they just got to give it everything they got. They're coy about showing how they do it under sail, but have been happy to show the different approach to their crew training. Just pain, mate, just pain. <laughs> Brutal. You're just hitting the limit and then trying to stay there as long as you can. Oh, it's disgusting. I mean, you're not allowed to stop. You're just not allowed to stop. <laughs> Hopefully it feels a bit like winning America's Cup race. So while the new breed of cup boats might look the same on the outside, there's been plenty going on behind the scenes but no one yet knows what the key to success will be.